Hello Pirates! Since the One Piece card game just released in Japan, today we are going to have a tutorial match between the Straw Hat and Animal Kingdom Pirate Star Decks. So to start, each player needs one leader card, one main deck of 50 cards, and one dawn deck of 10 dawn cards. Main decks are shuffled and leaders are placed in the leader zone. Before any cards are drawn, decide which player goes first. In real life, this is normally conducted by rock, paper, scissors and the winner gets to decide whether they go first or go second. For the purposes of today's match, Kaido is going first. Now each player finally draws their hand of 5 cards. Let's see what they got. Now, starting from the player going first, each player is now given a chance to mulligan their hand by returning their entire hand to the deck, shuffling everything together and redrawing 5 cards. But in this case, neither player chooses to do so. Next, each player places life equal to the life of their leaders. You can see it at the bottom on the right of the leader's name. Luffy has 5, Kaido has 5. So we'll now give both of them 5 life each. And with that, both sides are now ready to battle. So let's set sail in search of One Piece. Kaido's going first. Each turn is divided into five phases, starting with the refresh phase. So this is the usual phase in every game where you untap your tapped characters, but in the case of One Piece, if you have any Dawn cards attached to your characters or leaders, they are returned to your cost area, untapped, or in the active state. Next, the draw phase, but like many card games, the player going first does not get to draw. And next, the dawn phase. Now normally, during the dawn phase, a player adds two dawn from their dawn deck to their cost area, but for the player going first, they only gain one. Dawn is basically the mana or the cost used for this game, so this means the player going first only has access to one cost to pay. And now we move into the main phase. So unlike Yu-Gi-Oh and Vanguard where the main and battle phases are separate, One Piece is more similar to Digimon where you can carry out any kind of action within a single main phase, including attacking. There are four main actions you can conduct during your main phase. First, playing cards from your hand, whether it's characters, stages, or events. Second, activating the effects of your various cards. Third, attaching Dawn cards to your leader or characters. And fourth, of course, battling by declaring attacks with your leader or characters. But in One Piece, neither player can attack on their very first turn. So by paying one cost, Kaido will simply play Jin Rami from his hand. Now in real life, when you use your Dawn, you should be tapping it, but just for the purposes of making things easier to see on TTS, I'm gonna flip them instead. And with that, since he can't attack on the first turn, Kaido ends his turn. Next, it's the Straw Hat's move. Nothing happens in the Refresh phase, one draw in the Draw phase, and in the Dawn phase, Dawn, Dawn. Luffy will pay two cost in order to play the stage Thousand Sun. So similar to field spells in Yu-Gi-Oh, there is a dedicated zone for the stage and you can only have one on your field at any time. And if you play a stage while you currently have one on the field, the previous one will be discarded. Then of course, since Luffy can't attack on his first turn either, turn over. Back to Kaido, refresh, draw, dawn, dawn. And for three cost, he's going to play Sasaki on play. Dawn minus one to draw one card. But what does this mean? So Dawn minus effects basically ask you to return the specified number of Dawn from your field back to your Dawn deck as the cost for this effect. So by Dawn minus one, it means that Kaido will need to take one Dawn card from his cost area and return it to his Dawn deck in order to draw one card. So as you can see, as the cost for these powerful effects, they effectively slow down your Dawn accumulation. Alright, now since it's the second turn, the Animal Kingdom Pirates can attack. However, just like Digimon, characters cannot attack the turn they are played unless they have a keyword ability like Rush, so Sasaki is unable to attack. Although Jin Rami can attack, as you can see on the top right, her power is only 3000 and that is lower than the Luffy leader which has 5000. You need to have at least the same amount of power as the enemy leader in order to damage him. So for now, she's not going to be able to do anything. However, Kaido does have 5000 power, so resting himself, he launches an attack at Luffy. After an attack is declared, we first enter the block step where the opponent is allowed to block with any of their blockers, but of course, Luffy has none. Next, we enter the counter step where the opponent is allowed to play cards with counter effects from their hand. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like Luffy currently has any counter cards in his hand, but let me give you guys an example with Jin Rami. 
you can see on the left of her card text. In the same position as the shield value of Vanguard cards, you should see a counter plus 1000. So essentially, characters with these counter values can be discarded from your hand when you or your characters are attacked in order to increase their power for the duration of the battle in order to block the enemy's attack. But since Luffy doesn't have any, he has no choice but to take this blow. Now, One Piece has a pretty interesting damage system. Unlike Duel Masters, where your opponent gets to choose which of your shields to break, and unlike Digimon, where your security is broken in descending order, in One Piece, when your leader takes damage, you get to decide which card among your life is broken. So in this case, let's say Luffy decides to break his uh, second topmost life. So what happens is that in Duel Master style, this card from the life is added to its owner's hand. And at this moment, if the card has any trigger effects, they can be activated for free. But the card added was Frankie, as you guys can see, he has no trigger effects. So he's just simply added to the hand. Kaido is all done, he ends his turn. Refresh, draw, and Dawn, Dawn. Okay, looks like the Straw Hats will be able to do something spicy. For two cost, they play Sanji. And now, Luffy is going to attach some Dawn from his cost area to Sanji. When attaching Dawn to your leader or characters, you can only use active or untapped Dawn, which means Dawn that you haven't used to pay as the cost for other cards. So now, one card from the cost area will be placed under Sanji. And as you guys can see, Dawns basically kind of have inheritables during your turn, plus 1000 power. So they are also a way to increase the power of your characters and leader on the field. Next, Luffy will activate his leader effects. Activate main once per turn, give this leader or one of your characters one rested Dawn card. So this means that even though you have already used your Dawn as the cost for other cards, you can now take one of those and attach it to one of your characters. And now Sanji has two Dawn under him. Now take a look at this. Sanji has this effect. On Dawn times two, this character gains Rush. So these Dawn effects come into play when the card has the specified number of Dawn attached to it. So since Sanji currently has two Dawn attached to him, he gains Rush, which means he can attack the turn he comes into play. So he strikes, aiming for Kaido. Kaido has 5,000. Sanji normally only has 4,000, which wouldn't be enough to hit. But with two Dawn, with plus 1,000 each, he rises to 6,000. So in order to block, Kaido needs to rise to at least 7,000 power. Now you can see in his hand, Page 1 has counter plus 1,000, and Sheep's Head has counter plus 1,000 as well. So he could discard these two cards to increase Kaido's power to 7,000 for the battle and basically block the attack. But since he still has 5 life, he's just gonna take this first hit. He'll just take the first of his life, which is a stage card, but it does not have a trigger effect. Next, Luffy will use his last remaining Dawn in order to play Chopper, a trusty blocker, as you guys can see. And next, he will use the effect of the Thousand Sun. Activate main, you may rest this stage. One Straw Hat crew type leader or character on your field gates plus 1000 power during this turn. So by resting the Sunny, he increases his own leader's power by 1000 and attacks Kaido for 6000. So again, Kaido has to block with 2000. He chooses to do so by discarding two Sheep's Hits. And with that, the Straw Hat's turn is over. Refresh, draw, dawn, dawn. Now Kaido will play one of the basic combos of his deck, paying 4 cost. He plays ulti. And on play, Dawn minus 1, play up to one page 1 character with a cost of 4 or less from your hand at no cost. So by returning one Dawn back to the Dawn deck, another 4 cost page 1 is played for free. Kaido is assembling his minions. But with his Dawn exhausted, he is now out of moves. Now first, he's going to attack with Sasaki, but Sasaki only has 4,000 power, so he cannot damage the Luffy leader. Instead, he's going for Sanji, which also only has 4,000 power. Because remember, the power boost from the Dons is only during your turn, not the opponent's turn. So yes, just like in Digimon, when you declare an attack, whether it's with your leader or your character, you can either aim for the opposing leader or your opponent's rested or tapped characters. Now since Frankie has counter plus 1000, Luffy could discard Frankie here in order to protect Sanji, but he chooses to let Sanji go. So Sanji is KO'd and goes to the trash. When a character is KO'd, all of the Dawn that were attached to them are returned to the cost area in rest state. So they cannot be used for paying the cost of certain cards on the opponent's turn. Now Kaido will attack Luffy directly for 5000. Luffy chooses to take it. He chooses this life. And adding it to his hand, 
but it's just a chopper, no trigger effect. Turn over, refresh, draw, dawn, dawn. First, for one cost, Nami is played, and then for two, Luffy will play another two, Tony, Tony Chopper blockers. And then finally, for three cost, here comes Roronoa Zoro. Now Nami will activate her effect. Activate main once per turn. Give your leader or one of your characters one rested dawn card. You realize this is pretty much the same effect as Luffy leader. So with both of these effects, two rested dawn can now be attached to Luffy. I'll just put them horizontally like this. And then using the effect of 1000 Sunny, Luffy will gain another 1000 power boost for the turn. And he goes for Kaido on plus 1, 2, 3000. A total of 8000. So Kaido needs to block with at least 4k. There's no way he can do so. He takes damage. He chooses, well, maybe his bottommost life. Adds it to his hand. Reveal it. But it's not a trigger. Turn over. Refresh. Draw. Dawn. Dawn. Now it looks like it's time for Kaido to set up his stage as well. Paying one, two, and three, Onigashima is played in the stage area. Activate main. You may rest this card if your leader has the Animal Kingdom Pirates trait. Add one Dawn from your Dawn deck to your cost area in rest. So by resting Onigashima, Kaido will gain an additional Dawn in rest. So this field spell basically helps to make up for all of the Dawn that is returned to the Dawn deck for the cost of the Animal Kingdom pirate effects. Now with only two Dawn in his cost area remaining, the most Kaido could do now is play Jin Rami from his hand, but then he'd still have one unused Dawn. So you might think that maybe it might have been a bad idea to discard Sheep's Hit, because if he was still in the hand, Kaido would be able to play him for the remaining two cost. But the thing about the One Piece TCG is that even if you have Dawn to spare, it will almost never really go to waste because you can always attach it to your characters. So in this case, one Dawn will be placed beneath Sasaki. Since he's 4,000, this increases him to 5,000, which means he can now attack and damage Luffy. And since Jin Rami has counter plus 1,000, it might actually be better to leave her in the hand where she can be served as protection for Kaido. So the second Dawn will, okay, let's say we'll just attach it to Alt. Alright, now it's time. Sasaki attacks for 5,000, Luffy chooses to take it, no trigger. Ulti attacks for 6,000, Luffy takes it again, no trigger. And now page 1 attacks with 6,000 as well. Now at this moment, Luffy has 5 characters in his character area, which is the maximum capacity. So it would be a good idea to make some space now. He blocks with Chopper, which is KO. And finally, Kaido attacks, but Luffy blocks with Robin on counter, plus 1,000. Turn over, refresh. Draw, Dawn, Dawn. The Straw Hats are now at 8 Dawn, but it looks like they're not really drawing into their most powerful cards. First, for 4 cost, Luffy will play one of his signature moves, the event card, Jet Pistol. On main, KO one of your opponent's characters with a power of 6,000 or less. Page 1 is taken out. Then for 1 cost, another blocker, Chopper, is played. Now with both Nami and leader Luffy's effects, two of the rested Dawn will be attached to Zoro, unlocking his effects on Dawn times 1 to gain an additional plus 1000 power. So coupled with the two Dawn, he is at 8000. Then, choosing to keep his counters in his hand, Luffy attaches his remaining 3 active Dawn to himself and resting the 1000 Sunny gives himself a further plus 1000 boost to 9000. And with that, first, Zoro attacks on 8000. It is impossible for Kaido to block. He takes his middle damage, which is not a trigger, but it is king. Now, Luffy leader attacks on 9000. Again, Kaido has no choice but to take it. He takes his top life, which is Black Maria, not a trigger either. Turn in, refresh, draw, dawn, Dawn. Now there are a few interesting things that Kaido could do, but because I kind of want to reenact the Onigashima battle, paying 6, he will play the top of the 3 all-star calamities, King. And on play, Dawn minus 1 to KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of 4 or less. So returning 1 rested Dawn to the Dawn deck, Zoro is KO'd. And once again with Onigashima's effect, it is rested to regain that rested Dawn. And now, it is finally time for leader Kaido to activate his effect. Activate on main, Dawn minus 7. Once per turn, trash the top card of your opponent's life. So by returning 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 Dawn to the Dawn deck, the Straw Heads will lose their final life, which was Vivi. 
without triggering any trigger effects. No, she has none. Then attaching your final active dawn to Sasaki. It's time to battle. Sasaki attacks on 5,000. Luffy blocks with Usopp. Ulti attacks on 5,000. Luffy blocks with Frankie. Kaido attacks on 5,000. One of the chopper blocks. K.O. And with that, Kaido ends his turn. Refresh. Draw. Dawn. Dawn. The Straw Hats are now in maximum capacity. All 10 of their Dawn cards are in the cost area. But Usopp is not the card they need to clinch the game. First, Luffy will activate the effects of the 1000 Sunny to give Nami plus 1000. And then, paying 2 cost, he will play a second copy of 1000 Sunny over the current one. And since this one is brand new, it can be rested to activate its effects again giving Nami another plus 1,000, she's at 3k. Then with both Nami and Leader Luffy's effects, the two rested Dawn can now be placed under Nami, increasing her to a total of 5,000 power, same as Luffy Leader. And since there are 8 Dawn exactly remaining, they will simply be split equally among both, so now the Straw Hats have two 9k attackers. First, Nami attacks on 9k, Kaido takes the blow from his final life, and it is not a trigger. And now, Luffy strikes! Since Luffy currently has 9,000 power, Kaido needs to reach at least 10,000 in order to survive the attack. So, from his hand, Sasaki, Sasaki, page 1, Jinrami, page 1. Each one has counter plus 1,000 for a total of plus 5,000. Kaido survives the attack and turn over. Refresh, draw, dawn, dawn. Both sides have literally exhausted their resources. First, Kaido will make use of Onigashima's effect to gain a rested Dawn, and then without playing any cards, he puts one Dawn under Sasaki and his two remaining active Dawn under Jinrami. It is time to battle. King attacks! Luffy has no choice but to block with one of his choppers. Ulti attacks, Luffy blocks with his second chopper. Sasaki attacks, he guards with Usopp's counter plus 1000, but now Kaido knows Luffy has no more blockers on the field and no more cards in his hand. He himself attacks. Luffy has no life remaining, so it's a direct attack and the match is over. The winner is the Animal Kingdom Pirates, led by Kaido. Hope you guys found this tutorial match easy to understand and feel free to ask any questions about the rulings in the comment section down below. And of course, I'm planning to do a battle video between the remaining two starter decks, Shichibukai versus Worst Generation as well. So see you guys in the next One Piece battle video.